This video deals with the Fourier transform of periodic signals. So let us start with the synthesis expression of the Fourier series whereby we say that x of t is a periodic signal and we can break that periodic signal into sum of complex exponentials that is e to the power plus j k omega naught t and we have the coefficients which are multiplied with the complex exponentials these coefficients are a k and the summation is with respect to k which is minus infinity to infinity so this is a well known synthesis expression for any given periodic signal so let us say we are interested in taking the Fourier transform of this signal that is we are interested in x of omega so we have an integration from minus infinity to infinity x of t the signal x of t times exponential to the power minus j omega t dt now plugging in the value of x of t which is over here so we have a summation that is k minus infinity to infinity and the coefficients a k so we would be left with the integration that is minus infinity to infinity exponential that is e to the power plus j k omega naught t times this part which is e to the power minus j omega t dt now if you observe this this is again a Fourier transform of a function say this is the function let us call this as g of t so this part would become g of omega so let us develop the intuition for g of omega what it would be and for that let us start with a signal in time domain that is basically one for all values of t that is we simply have a signal in time domain that is having a constant value of 1. So the Fourier transform of this signal is 2 pi delta of omega. That is we have an impulse at 0 which is having a value of 2 pi delta of omega. But say for this we perform a shift in frequency. So we have 2 pi delta of omega minus omega naught. That is we have shifted it to omega naught. So in that case, from the shifting in frequency domain, we would have an exponential multiplied with this one. That is this one would be multiplied with an exponential that is e to the power plus j omega naught t. So from here we can develop the intuition for g of t that is our g of t is simply e to the power plus j k omega naught t and this would have a Fourier transform that is g of omega that is 2 pi delta of omega minus k omega naught. Therefore our x of omega is the summation from here the coefficients and the solution of this g of omega that is over here which is 2 pi delta of omega minus k omega naught so this is the most important uh, equation that we wanted to drive and it is important because if you have any periodic signal and you know the Fourier series coefficients of it right AK. So in this way you can simply multiply those coefficients with 2 pi delta of omega minus k omega naught and then sum, sum them up to find the Fourier transform. So this gives us the Fourier transform for periodic signals. Now let us look into some of the examples where we apply this transformation on periodic signals. So in this example we have a periodic signal and this periodic signal is basically just a square wave which is x of t and x of t has an amplitude of 1 between minus t1 to t1 and overall the time period is 
from minus t by 2 to t by 2. So in our prior discussions related to the Fourier series, the Fourier series coefficients, that is the analysis expression, is given over here, which is a k, and that is equivalent to sine k omega naught t1 over pi k. Now we have the coefficients, so we can plug in these coefficients over here and we would get the Fourier transform that is x of omega. So this is done over here. We have plugged in the coefficients a k over here and then we have the overall Fourier transform. So for a periodic square wave, we have a stem plot of a sink function. So note that at zero we have a DC value. So this corresponds to A naught. That is when K is equal to zero. And we know that this A naught is, is simply the average of this signal over time period, T naught. That is in our present case, we find the area of this signal and that would give, give us A naught. So, which is 1 times 2t1. So, this is simply 2t1. So, therefore, from here, omega of 0, that is, this point is simply a0 times 2 pi and delta of omega, which is 4 pi t1 delta of omega. Now this doesn't make much sense right now because we have 4 pi t1 and over here we simply have a pi. So how did we get this pi? This is because we are fixing the value of t1 to 1 by 4. And why is it so? So let's come back to this plot. All of this time period is divided into four chunks that is from here to here, here to here and finally here. There is one, two, three, four and this T1 is equal to one by four time period that is T naught or T. So based on this setting of T1, we have omega naught, which is simply a pi delta of omega. And this is appearing over here. Similarly, this 2, which links with A1. So this is simply from here, sine of omega naught, which is just 2 pi by t times t1 which is 1 by 4 t divided by pi. So this t would cancel with this t and we would simply have 1 by pi sine of pi by 2 and the sine of pi by 2 we know that this is simply at pi by 2 it is 1 so our a1 is 1 by pi and multiplying this with the x of omega that is x of of omega at at omega is equal to omega naught so this is simply a1 times 2 pi delta of omega minus omega naught uh, this is simply 2 delta of omega minus omega naught and this you would observe that this is now appearing over here and similar intuitions for uh, can be developed for rest of the harmonics so next in example 2 we are given with a periodic signal which is simply a periodic impulse train mentioned over here 
and we are interested in taking the Fourier transform of the signal. So the Fourier series coefficients of this signal are quite easy to find. That is, we set the time period from here to here. That is minus t by two to t by two, and over here it is delta of t. So this delta of t is appearing over here. Then we have exponential to the power minus j omega naught t dt. So this whole thing would simply result in a one, and we would be left with one by t, which is over here. So our a k is simply one by t for all values of k. So plugging in this coefficient over here in this expression, so we would be left with simply two pi by t times a periodic impulse function. So at zero we have two pi by t at omega naught, which is simply two pi by t. So again we would have two pi by t and so on. This is two omega naught. Minus omega naught, minus two omega naught, and so on. So, in short, a periodic impulse train in time domain has a Fourier transform, which is also a periodic impulse train in the frequency domain.